All right, can you turn on my mic so I can speak? All right, I will call to order the Common Council meeting on December 13th at 7.33. First up is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Alder Allen. Present. Alder Rada Here. Alder Gerhardt. Here. Uh, Alder Hertz. Here. Alder Maldonado. Here. Mayor Richardson? Here. Alder Strassman? Here. Alder Udell? Here. Alder Wheeler? Here. You have a quorum, Mayor. All right, thank you. Moving right along, we do have one person, it looks like, for the uh, public appearances for non agenda items. Uh, Christopher Jones, if you want to come up, you got three minutes to talk about, looks like, the Jamestown Hugo Park fence. Yes, uh, my name's Christopher Jones, and uh, just a little context. Uh, we live backed up to Eagle Park off of Valley Forge Drive. And so back in May uh, 31st, it was, uh, you noticed that the fence was going up out there in the park. And so I had sent Dave Herbst an uh, email regarding that, and we've been on the park for 22 years, uh, had two boys and a daughter, young daughter. <laughs> Uh, they're now like 32, 30, and 28 <laughs> years old. But um, the thing about the fence was that, so it, it cut across this large open area in the park. It's the only op big open area in the park. And this fence, just the, the uh, outfield part of it, cuts right across. If it was just the sides, I wouldn't even be too concerned because, you know, there, it's out further at the boundaries, you know. We're closer to the bike path that goes through and stuff like that. But uh, so growing up, our kids, uh, we played family football games, um, throwing Frisbee, flying kites, and now this fence all of a sudden appeared. And I'm like, what happened? I never heard that this fence was going to come up. You know, what, what's this all about? So uh, I sent this message to Dave and, and whined, <laughs> complained about it because, you know, we had a lot of good times on the park. And, and I thought, this is something. I, I don't know that most people would be for this because it really takes – a multi-purpose field. I mean, there were a lot of pickup games. You could see uh, young boys out there playing football in the fall. In fact, this last fall they were trying to play too inside of the fence now. And it, it looks like it's a dangerous thing. Kids running, for, looking back for a ball, running towards the fence. I mean, it, that just to me it was speaking again like, yeah, this was the right thing to do. So I had sent this message to Dave, and Dave basically, um, I want to set the record straight. Dave did not push this. I asked about it. He said, yeah, there's some others that complained about it. If you want to go ahead and get signatures, that would be the appropriate thing to do. So my wife and I spent a good part of a week going out door to door to try to collect signatures. Now, we only went around the uh, park itself, you know, so like there's uh, Monticello. We went back into that. There's a little circle, too, that comes off of that. But we basically stayed just around the park and then up King James Way. That's as far as we went. Um, and the results of that, so the results of that effort was um, we had a total of 85 signatures. And we, like I said, we went to every single address. And I would say that about one third of the addresses that we stopped at, there was either no response or somebody was inside and they just didn't want to, they thought it was solicitors or something, so they didn't want to respond. So I would say we probably only got a third of the total response of what maybe you could have got out of what we did. Um, we had... Christopher, I'm sorry, you're already over three minutes. Okay, can I just really say a couple of things? Real quick. Okay, yeah, we, we, so we had, we had five people that declined to sign and they said they wanted to see the fence themselves and get more information and we only had two that really sounded like they wanted the fence possibly so five undecided and it was a total of 85 um like i said so that's actually, like 95 percent 95 percent of the people yeah. that we talked to that we actually talked to thank you for wanted it, wanted it removed yeah so that's where it's at. All right. 
Thank you. But if you're going to blame somebody, don't blame Dave. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no. We blame him for other things. This. It was my idea to, <laughs> to try to get this removed. I've got uh, seven grandchildren now. So. Thank you. That's and, great. And like I said, we tried to fly a kite out there. Thank you. All right. Uh, moving on. We will go to the consent agenda. Is there so moved. moved by Jay to approve? Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Randy. Anything that people want to take out and do separately at all? Seeing nothing, then we can vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nay. All right. That is approved. Administrator's report. Good evening, everyone. I've got uh, a number of items here for everyone's information. I'll start with some events that are upcoming. Uh, tomorrow, there's a ribbon cutting at 11.45 a.m. at Forward Tie Boxing at 2500 Rimrock Road. There's also a groundbreaking uh, tomorrow for the headquarters expansion at General Beverage. That'll be at 3 p.m. Excuse me. Uh, December 15th is the employee luncheon uh, here at City Hall. We haven't had an employee luncheon uh, for a couple of years, obviously, due to COVID concerns. And uh, our department heads were consulted on how they'd like to proceed this year, and there was overwhelming desire to bring that luncheon back. So that'll be uh, the 15th at... Uh, if you plan on making it, I would show up about 11.45 to ensure you'll be in line early enough to get food. And uh, that'll be in the Oak Hall room of the community center. December 17th, there's also some uh, community events. Uh, during the daytime, we've started a, a new event that's been uh, led by uh, several folks here at City Hall. Uh, it's titled Celebrate the Season with Fitchburg. Uh, that'll be from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the park shelter at Hegel Jamestown. Uh, and also here at Fitchburg City Hall. And then again, the event will be held from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. at the uh, clubhouse of the Nine Springs Golf Course and also at Doxa Church. Uh, it'll be an opportunity to do some arts and crafts, have some drinks and snacks, learn more about city uh, services, and there may be a visit with uh, Santa Claus at uh, those stops as well. So. Uh, it's a nice event that's been uh, distributed to four different locations within the city. And then the other event on the 17th is the third uh, annual Holiday Lights Tour. Uh, that'll be from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. in the map of the residences, which I'm told there are uh, at least 40 or so that have signed up to participate this year, will be available on the city's website later this week. So I encourage folks to take advantage of those events uh, upcoming and uh, celebrate the season. Some other items. Uh, Fitrona EMS uh, contract has been ratified by the union. Uh, Randy uh, Araldo Udell was a member of the negotiations team and uh, Alder Strassman is a member of the EMS, EMS Commission. I don't know if either of you have anything you wanted to add in regards to that contract, but I at least wanted to let the council know that that has been ratified. No, I have nothing to add, but thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, and then uh, item number 10 in the consent agenda I want to bring to your attention. Uh, that is the resolution R233-22, which is updates to our meeting rooms, our city council chambers here and our uh, meeting room down the hall. I'd like you, as time allows between now and the next meeting, or preferably even in advance of that, take a look at the drawings and renderings in that uh, proposal and uh, share any feedback that you have with Jeremy Crosby and I in regards to the proposed upgrades to this room and the room down the hall. And we're both available for any questions that anyone may have. And uh, continuing on, uh, I received uh, some follow-up information from the Fitchburg Star regarding the council action uh, last month. Uh, they have indicated a desire to discuss increasing their distribution uh, with the city. Uh, what I'll be doing is preparing a memo with a summary of options that staff have identified. Uh, to conduct our outreach, communication outreach efforts, and I'll present that to this group uh, once that's complete, ideally uh, next month, for your consideration of uh, direction for staff. Tax bills have been placed in the mail today. Um, the city portion 
of the average tax home average home tax bill uh, with uh, when I say this average home tax bill I'm referring right now to the homes that existed in the city of Fitchburg prior to the town of Madison attachment the town attached homes are an entirely different matter in this but you've got information on that but the average home that existed in Fitchburg on January 1 the decrease uh, in the city's portion of the tax is about 2.9% or about $75. So I think that's an important uh, consideration for folks. I know there was a lot of um, concern when assessment notices were mailed. Uh, we talked about average assessments going up uh, about 19%, but at the end of the day, the city's uh, portion of their tax bill actually decreased about 3%. So I think that's a uh, a testament to the work that this council has done to ensure that uh, we're being responsible stewards of money. Uh, Misty shared an email with the council in regards to all the tax bills and the inserts that were uh, inserted both in the Fitchburg side of the town or the property tax bills and the town side of the tax bills that also provides additional information. So please let either of us know if you have any questions about any of that particular information. I have some good news on some hiring uh, updates. Uh, Chris Leitz uh, will be joining us as our new city assessor on January 10th. Uh, he comes to us from uh, the city of Janesville as their deputy city assessor there. We also uh, have an accepted offer of employment for a new project engineer. Uh, his name is Ross Collar, K-A-H-L-E-R. Uh, he comes to us from the private sector and will be joining us January 16th. And we have also hired uh, and have an accepted offer for a person named Tim Volker, who will be our next uh, Department of Public Works Director and City Engineer. He's coming to us from the city of uh, Stewart, Florida. And uh, he'll be getting his employment with us on January 23rd. So I want to thank... Uh, staff that worked on all of those hiring processes there are still several ongoing for other positions throughout the city but obviously with uh, in particular the two department head processes those are, are rather involved and i'm grateful that we've got some good candidates there to be beginning their time with the city and then finally i want to thank the entire team at the city uh, as well as the elected officials here uh, i think we had a, a really great 2022 and uh, it's a testament to the work that that not only this group has done, but also the, the great team we have back at City Hall, Police Department, Fire Department, Highway Department, every, every department throughout the city uh, has done a great job this year. And of course, we look forward to a, what we know will be a busy 2023 as well. So thank you. Jay? Yeah, does, uh, does uh, he know that it snows here? <laughs> he he is originally from Wisconsin and is a graduate of UW Madison, so he he is well aware of the climate change. <laughs> is the project engineer um, is that a replacement for the transportation engineer? Or is that a separate position? So the project engineer is a, a replacement. Uh, Tom Balwig has just left us okay. as well. So okay. yeah, um, and we have. Uh, reevaluated the position description and job title for the transportation engineer that has been posted also as a project engineer, okay. but has also looked to incorporate some of the facets of the transportation side into that particular position description. Great. So, yeah. We got Dave and then Julie. Dave. And hey Chad, with uh, uh, Chris was here. Is there any update on the re removing the remainder of the fence uh, in the park? Um, so if what I recall at this point from my last update from the Parks Department is the wing sections remain. Does that uh, jive with what you're seeing over there, Dave? Uh, the wings were taken down. The okay. outfield is, is still up. So it's the outfield that's still yeah. up. Okay. I'll uh, check in and report back to the council when we might anticipate that the outfield is uh, going to be taken down. Thank you. You bet. Julia? Yeah, so for Chad, Chad, how many vacancy we have still in the Public Works Department. 
We have an engineering technician position that's still vacant and one engineer position, a project engineer, and then we would have the uh, assistant city engineer department of public works director position vacant. Uh, that one we've deliberately held. Uh, in fact, Paul Woodard is, okay. um, you know, we're, yeah, yeah. we're basically using the salary savings there to okay. compensate for uh, his time. And then we wanted to also leave that vacant for the next director to take a look at that position and, and uh, be involved in, in filling it. I have a follow-up. Uh, what about the new position that we created during budget time for, you know, assistant, you know, what the other one? I don't remember the title. Oh, for the yeah, um, that is uh, that one's kind of on hold at this point oh, in time. Okay. So since it's a new position, it will ultimately need to go to the personnel committee uh, okay. for uh, review of the position description oh, okay, and okay, authorization okay. to move forward. So, okay, okay. Okay. Um, I don't know if we'll have that um, on the January agenda. Okay. Uh, I know that there are some other positions that uh, Human Resources is going to be okay. bringing forward and, and focusing their time on, and I want to. Okay. Allow them an opportunity to spend their time on filling some other positions in the city, and and we can get to that one as well. So, there's a lot of hiring needs that we have throughout the city. So, if you know good people, send them our way. All right, moving on to commission reports. Anything you want to add for plan, Randy? Uh, the next meeting is scheduled for December twentieth. All right, going to public works, Dave. I'll move approval resolution R. To 1522, creation of a combined Badger and Terravessa lift station rate. Second. Senate by Jay, the public works approved? Public works approved. The finance approved? Finance approved. All right, what's this one about? So we have uh, uh, two areas in the city, uh, one a new one, Terravessa, and one from the consolidation and Badger that are not fed, uh, not the sewage is not fed gravity back to Madison Met, and that's these two neighborhoods. And we have... Um, it will cost more to, over time, for maintenance on these and eventually, you know, replacement. So we're creating a rate that will um, uh, set aside the money to, a for both the uh, increased maintenance cost and the future replacement of these two, so that the other rate payers that are on gravity feed, you know, don't don't uh, don't have to pay for this. And the city. Um, Misty and the team really did a good job looking at an, a number of options uh, to come up with this, and I, I, I'm, I'm very happy with the outcome, I guess, is what I would say. Uh, Jim, did you have anything else you wanted to add on that? No. No. Okay. All right. Questions? Julia? Okay, so who is, who is going to be paying for the maintenance of this lift station? Is the city or the neighbor? Well, the rate the rate payers yeah. will through their through their rates. They'll have a higher they'll have a higher rate. Oh, they're going to have a higher. Okay, okay, okay. It's managed okay. by the city, but that, the rates will yeah. pay for it. Okay, okay. okay. And, and if I could add one thing, Julia, um, the Terravesa is new, so we're not anticipating replacement of that for hopefully for many years. The Badger is going to be within relatively within a year or two. City of Madison will be doing that, and we're paying a portion of it because we uh, there's residents in both Madison and Fitchburg now that are served by that. Okay. So I presume the excess rate uh, is going to be escrowed in a segregated account for that purpose. That is correct. Yes. Did we did we look into the option of creating a separate sewerage district instead of just changing the rate in that one? Uh, we did not, Jay. Uh, I. I um, I, I think, I guess my preference has always been for, you know, people served by that to pay for that. And uh, Well, yeah, I'm just thinking if we had a separate district, it would be, their rate would be completely separate from everything else in the fund. I just, I get concerned about, you know, future councils, not anyone up here, of course, but future councils seeing money there and then some project comes along and someone decides to borrow it. And I think I'm here at lockbox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why I, I just prefer to see a, I, you, the idea of having a separate district makes it a lot harder to move those funds around. But, you know. Well, Misty spoke to that. You know, I, I'm, I'm not. Misty, do you want to add anything? Yeah. Uh, yeah, just a, having a separate district, we did look at that back when we implemented the Terra Vesa billing rate, and it's more complicated than you may think that it would be. And so this separate billing code, it will be in segregated accounts in the, the accounting software, so we'll keep track of it all separately. We'll be able to still get that same end result, 
uh, without the extra administrative burden. Anyone else? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? That one's approved. Next one, Dave. Move approval resolution R-219-22, approving corrosion investigation and rehabilitation services for well four and well number 10. Second. Senate by uh, Gabriella on that one. The public's approved. Public works approved. The finance approved. Finance approved, yes. And you want to speak to this one, Dave? Yes, I, I can. Um, both of these wells uh, have had, uh, we noticed that they had reduced capacity, weren't working well, and on both we found damage um, due to biological contamination, it basically ate through the casing. And uh, it's happened twice. And so if it only happened once, I guess, you know, Maybe it's a you know a one-off, but we we recognize we have a problem, but we don't fully understand the um, the depth of it. So we uh, hiring a hiring a consultant to to evaluate this, evaluate the amount of bacteria in these, uh, look at different mitigation techniques, and come up with a whether it's a, a plan for increased maintenance or a plan for. Uh, um, shocking the wells to to uh, eliminate this bacteria. Um, you know, we just need another plan. We can't be going through this every couple of years, losing wells and incurring high um, high repair costs. And uh, the person leading this is a former uh, city employee uh, that we hold in very high uh, regard. Um, and so we believe this will be this will give us a path to to uh, keep our wells more reliable. Okay. Questions at all? If I may add, um, the, the issue here is, is some mi microbial corrosion, or microbial-induced corrosion, and I want to be clear that this is not a problem unique to Fitchburg's water system. Uh, we draw from a rather large aquifer for our, our water uh, that's regional, um, not just, you know, small geographical area of Dane County. We're talking a large portion of uh, southern Wisconsin and I believe even into uh, portions of Iowa and Minnesota draw on the same aquifer that, that our wells do. So uh, we are also obviously utilizing uh, not only this company to help us uh, troubleshoot this particular issue, but also reaching out to others uh, who may have been experiencing similar issues. And what this just does is causes uh, premature wear on our equipment and uh, needing of replacement sooner than than we would typically expect. I want to confirm with everybody who may be listening as well as the council that our drinking water is perfectly fine. It's perfectly safe. It's tested on regular basis and in compliance with any sorts of DNR regulations and so forth in that um, this this should be of no immediate concern for anyone's uh, water quality. Chet, thank you very much. I, I'm sorry I didn't I didn't clarify that. Uh, this problem uh, is more widespread than you know. This first I heard of it, I was visiting in California, and and my brother is friends with a someone a water supply uh, engineer in California that's worked all over the world for over 40 years. And when I mentioned what I we were having, he, oh yes, we've seen that in all these places, and uh, it's a common. More common than you think. I, I wish it wasn't, but um, we will address it. All right. Seeing nothing else, we can go ahead and vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed, nay. That one's approved. Next one, Dave. Next, we have resolution R220-22, accepting subdivision improvements on outlot 15 of Nine Springs, the Set. Limerick. Limerick development. Second. Second. Signed by Jay, the public works proof. Public works approved. And what's this one? It's just, you know, they finished up, um, finished up this development. Uh, the city has signed off on all lot 15 on the improvements uh, so it can be uh, standard. W standard, yeah, approved. standard boilerplate. Um, all right. Then it sounds like Jim's phone has a question, but maybe not. <laughs> All right, seeing nothing else, we go ahead and vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. That one's approved. Next one, Dave. Next, I'll move approval of resolution R222-22, approving revised Fourth Amendment to the agreement for subdivision improvements in the plat of 
Tara Vessa. Second. Senated by Jay. Did public works approve? Public works approved. And what's this one about? So this Fourth Amendment, uh, there were some uh, previous. Oh, uh, wait a minute. You, yeah, I think you skipped. You know, did I skip one? 221. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm off here. Okay. Well, we can do, Let, I guess we'll. Let's do this one, then we'll come back. Yeah. Okay. So um, we had some uh, previous language in here. Uh, sometimes these, um, these plots, you know, they're kind of staged, and sometimes it's best not to put in, say, terraces and concrete because it will be damaged uh, in the future, and we'll, we'll give them a little longer amount of time to, to get these improvements in. And, and there was some wording that didn't get into, the, uh, didn't get into this contract. This has been added uh, to this Fourth Amendment um, in this agreement, and also it, um, I believe we have extended warranty on this, and if I remember right, uh, there were some, it, it talks about some, um, some cracks in the sewer, in sewer pipes. It also, we required some extended warranty uh, for this, so uh, we're we're approving the amendment, and we're cleaning up the language, getting everything incorporated into this. All right. Sounds good. Not seeing any questions. All in favor, say aye. 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 And opposed, nay. That's approved. You want to go back to number four now? I'll stay in order, maybe. Uh, I move approval resolution R221-22, accepting subdivision improvements in the plat of second edition of Terravessa. Second. Senate by J. Public Works approved. Public Works approved. All right. And what's this one? Standard standard subdivision improvements uh, been uh, conditionally approved by the um, by the city, and it's ready to move forward. All right. Not seeing any questions. All in favor, say aye. 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 And opposed, say nay. That one's approved. Anything else you want to add for Public Works? There is not. All right. Let's go to Park Commission. So we met on December 1st. Um, um, we didn't have anything on the agenda for uh, approval, but we discussed, we have a presentation from the tree committee uh, regarding the tree preservation ordinance that is gonna come to us uh, in the next first meeting for the committee of the whole for a presentation and is running through committee to understand what does it mean this tree preservation ordinance and why it's important for the city. So. Um, we had a presentation and then we discussed, um, you know, um, now that we had a resolution approved, approved by the council for the reclassification of the Stony Prairie Park from a neighborhood park to an area. So now the next step for that is we want to have a, um, a meeting with the neighbors to, to here in the chambers, maybe at the beginning of the year to to share with them uh, the design, the final design for the park. So this is coming. Um, and that's it. And then we have a staff report, but um, uh, it was a very short meeting. That's All it. right. Thank you, library board. Uh, our next meeting is next Wednesday. All right. Commission Agent Hall. Uh, I just want to report, um, you know, very, uh, very positive news. You know, we, we've, we've, um, We've uh, um, raised more money than we had, had hoped for on our patio, and uh, so um, they're still accepting, still accepting donations, but that's great news. Um, there's an event, Chad, do you recall, is it Thursday or Friday? They're having a, kind of a I music. I tomorrow, at, isn't it? Um, you recall if it was Thursday? The dance party? The dance party, Let yes. I think it's tomorrow. I think it's tomorrow. Actually. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, it is tomorrow. Scott will uh, be there dancing, apparently. All right. And I just want to add, you know, the friends of the, the friends of the uh, senior center just uh, do such a good job with scholarships, and you know they are just they're just a golden group of people, and we're very fortunate to have them making you know, the lives of our senior s citizens better. All right, RCC. A couple reminders around the holidays. We do have a holiday recycling guide on our website. If you're curious about specific holiday type things that you might not know how to recycle. There is a guide on the city website. And then second, the holiday tree pickup um, happens every year in January. So if you have a Christmas tree, um, I'll just want to call out the dates. It is the first and third week of January. So January 2nd, January 16th, you should have it out on the curb 
That's a Monday morning by 6.30 a.m. And also you should note that if it gets covered by snow during that week, you need to take it above the snow, otherwise the <laughs> truck will pass it right on by. So um, make sure you keep an eye on it that week um, whenever you decide to take it out. That's all. Can I ask a question? Sure. Can the people take those three to the recycle place? I don't think I, so. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. No. All right, TTC. Uh, we can start with the resolution. I will move approval of resolution R205-22, amending the 2022 general fund budget transit study as amended by finance committee. Second. Senator by, I'll give it to Julia. Uh, did TTC approve? Yes. And did finance approve? We, we did the amended, amended. version okay. of it. All right, and you want to speak to this, Kira? Yeah, yeah, so this is a, um, this is, an uh, intracity transit feasibility study. I was interested in bringing it to the budget, but obviously the budget was very tight this year. There was no money for it. So I worked with Misty, uh, asked her if we could find some staff vacancy funding to put it in the 2022 budget, this year's budget. Um, and since the transportation engineer has been vacant for a significant period of time, um, and for other reasons, Misty was able to find uh, funding within the public works budget to cover it. Uh, it was originally 15,000. After some additional discussion with Bill Balky at TTC last week, uh, he said that that's not going to be sufficient. Misty was able to identify another 10000 and so we uh, amended it in finance to make it a $25,000 study. Um, this is uh, Obviously, this is related to our discussions that we've had throughout 2022. Um, certainly about the, the senior center shuttle or the civic campus shuttle, that potential model, how that could work. Um, and then TTC also uh, has identified a couple additional areas to study. Number one would be to extend the bus route from Cahill, Maine, um, right near the intersection of Bikini and Fish Hatchery, all the way down to the civic campus to kind of connect those two areas of the bus route, and then also potentially park and rides. Um, so those three kind of studies that would be sort of an interim solution before we might potentially expand the bus system when as the city grows. So, um, But we've had a lot of discussion about that senior center vehicle, really kind of digging into that and seeing how that would function and if we can make that work. Um, and I think that pretty much covers it. I'm happy to answer any questions if anyone has any. Questions, comments? I guess I just had one, and I don't know if you talked about this in the meeting or not, because I think everyone up here agrees that yeah, it'd be great if we could have more inner city transportation, but also knowing the budget impact of that, because we know a little bit of that when you talk about going all the way to the Civic Campus, for example, and knowing all the other things people want to do, this, the likelihood, I would guess, of this happening is not going to be till for five, six years, frankly, because there's so many other needs. Does it make sense to do this now if we're not going to touch it for if we're not, I mean, we want to plan at some point in time, but I worry that if we do this, it's going to set a shelf for five or six years, and then someone's going to say, well, this is out of date. This isn't good information. So I don't know if you talked about that or not, because I think everyone up here agrees, yeah, we want to do that. However, how are you going to pay for it? And I don't, and hopefully that's kind of what it's focusing on is costs. And I don't know if there are options for more funding, but it, if it's a, should we do this? I think everyone up here agrees, yeah, we should. We don't need to spend $25,000. We all agree on that. Yeah, I, I, I really do think that it's focused on how it would function funding-wise. Because I just don't think we have any concept exactly of how it would function if we could hire an outside company or if we could have it work internally. That's my understanding of the feasibility study is to figure out if it's actually an idea that would function and what it would cost and what it would take to make it happen. I also have my doubts about if we can make it work in the near future. Um, there has been a lot of momentum around this, a lot of conversation. I personally think, and we've discussed in TTC, that it's it, we should we just need need more information before we could even decide whether or not it's possible. It, like we just don't know enough right now about what it would cost. So um, I do think it's a good time for the study just to figure out what's even possible, um, because otherwise it's all we're all just making assumptions um, rather than working off of actual data. And maybe it's too expensive, but at least we'll, we'll know exactly what we'll have to work towards in the future. So um, yes, we, we talked about it, but um, I personally think it's a good, good, um, good moment in time to try it, even if it's not feasible in the very near future. Jay? And then Jay. Yeah, I, I agree with that assessment. I mean, um, it ha this has been something that's been talked about for a long, long, long time. And, but it's, it just gets talked about. So at least this gives us something to talk about. 
So, and, and there's money available from staff vacancies, so it seems like a time that we can do this without having any real budgetary impact to the, to the residents. Jim? Yeah, my thought would be, wouldn't we just need something in case grants develop that we can then have something in the can and we can just throw it out there because we never know what type of grants are going to be out there for transportation. Yeah, hopefully they're an ongoing grant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One-time grants do not help. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? At least on this, they help on a lot of things. But. All right, then we go ahead and vote on that. All in favor say aye. 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 And opposed nay. All right, that is approved. Anything else for TTC? Uh, yeah, we did have a conversation in our meeting last week on, on Thursday about the Sion Road and McCoy Road intersection. Um, that's that we're, you know that's that curve um, with the bike path intersecting that's pretty dangerous. We got a grant to cover um, a, a transportation safety grant, federal grant to cover the reconstruction of the intersection to make it a signalized intersection, a T intersection. Um, but there was some complications with KL Engineering needing to slightly curve the road away from a property that we thought we'd have a difficult time acquiring some of that land. Um, so the road is instead of it being completely straight. It's going to curve a little bit more. And then also there was some discussion about the bike path, and there's like a little driveway to a trailhead, like a parking lot for the trailhead, and how that the geometry of that all works with the signalized intersection. Um, there were three different options that the KL Engineering presented. Um, the TTC recommended to keep it the way it was originally, which is where the driveway is still the same way, and the bike path is still the same way. The only difference is that the... Um, there will be a signalized intersection. There was conversation about moving the driveway uh, of that uh, of that parking lot and or moving the bike path. My personal opinion is that there's some wetland considerations in that area that can get very pricey. Um, and that was kind of where, where the conversation, the, the one downside of not moving the, the, the uh, you know entrance of the parking lot is that cars might get a little backed up if there's lots of cars turning into the parking lot. But TTC decided that that wasn't enough of a concern to justify the additional cost of changing the orientation. Um, but that's out there. If anyone wants to talk more about it, I'm happy to show it to you. Um, or the conversation on TTC is pretty comprehensive. I know the bike committee also covered it. I'm not sure if Public Works talked about it. Um, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to flag that since that's a big project coming. And um, obviously, you know, changes will be coming by to council eventually. So thanks. All right, thanks. See you. So we don't meet again until next year. All right. Egg and Rural Affairs. Egg and Rural Affairs meets on the 20th at 4 p.m. All right. EMS. Um, we meet Thursday. All right. Bike meeting. Um, there was a meeting earlier this week, but there was an Internet outage the night before, so I did not <laughs> get the notice that the Internet was back on on time. Um, so I will have to check back with the chair to... Uh, figure out what was discussed. It seems like a lot of the committee members might have missed the meeting as well. I don't think Scott even uh, got to see it. So um, the items that are on the agenda were trail etiquette signs, parking stalls for parks, 2023 draft priorities, and review and feedback on intersection alternatives at McCoy Road and South Syene Road slash Capital City Trail. The next meeting is February 7th, 2023. All right, tree advisory. No report. All right, landmarks. No report. All right, housing advisory. Um, we met last night. Um, we had a presentation by Sustained Dane. They have a um, program that they've piloted in Madison and Middleton uh, in which um, landlords of uh, multifamily units can opt into an energy efficiency program. Um, we heard, I mean, it was a really good committee and, uh, presentation, and it sounds like the cost savings are mainly passed on to the tenants. Um, so we're actually exploring this and all the different sort of options as the TID district closes next year and thinking about what sort of housing um, upgrades and um, different issues uh, we might want to put on that list. So um, we'll be bringing that to the committee of the whole likely next year. All right. 
Healthy Neighborhoods. Our next meeting is January 11th. All right. Going on to finance. Uh, I have to check here. We're, we're going to... I missed these here. Uh, motion to postpone resolution R-210-2 to updating the 2022 and 2023 fee schedule to include initial application and annual fees for small wireless facilities. Second. Senator by Gabriella. Do you want to speak to why? There's a, there's a logistics issue. or Misty, would you like to explain that process that we discovered? Yeah, happy to. Uh, so the there's an ordinance that needs to be approved first establishing the overall process, and then this resolution would establish the fee for uh, providing that service. The ordinance and the resolution were both referred the last time. The ordinance actually doesn't come back until the next meeting because of how plan commission fell. So uh, this resolution should also happen at that same meeting. All right. And that's postponed to January 10th. All right. We'll go ahead and vote on that. All in favor of postponing, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nay. All right, that was postponed. Next one. Uh, motion to approve resolution R-216-22, amending the 2022 debt and capital projects, projects fund budgets, uh, payment on deferred special assessment and unspent 2020A proceeds to reduce debt insurance. Second. Second. That was issuance, not insurance. I apologize. All right. Uh, seconded by, I think it was Gabriella. Do you want to speak to this? Or? Uh, Misty's going to speak to it. All right. So uh, even though we didn't borrow money in 2022, I always look at kind of what other funding might be available that we could redirect to uh, reduce the amount of borrowing that we need to do. And there were two uh, projects or two pieces that I'm bringing forward for your consideration. Uh, the first is about an $800,000 payment we received in 2022 for a deferred special assessment. Uh, since the underlying project that the that deferred special assessment was paid for, that debt has already been paid off. Uh, so that $800,000 I'm proposing to redirect to other projects that we would otherwise borrow for uh, and use this funding instead. The goal being really to save interest cost in the long run for the city taxpayers. Uh, the other piece then is I borrowed money in 2020 for the Uptown Roads. That project is now complete and I have some money that I borrowed that I don't need anymore. Uh, and because I have spend down requirements when we borrow money, um, I'd like to redirect that to another project that fits within the requirements for that 2020 issuance um, and then reduce the amount of money I would otherwise have to borrow for that project as well. All right. Any questions? No finance approved. Oh, sorry. I should have asked that. <laughs> All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nay. All right, that is approved. Anything else on finance? Uh, no, nothing else. All right, personnel, anything? No report. All right, public works or public safety, you mean? Uh, nothing. Our meeting was canceled. All right. Uh, going to new business, director Furl. Looks like that's finance. Randy, you want to do that one? No, we talked about these items being moved to either uh, uh, Misty or... Um, yeah, are you still need to do a motion, though. Can we do the motion? Okay, okay. I apologize. Motion to approve re resolution R-225-22, authorizing legal services in defense of Artisan Village, LLC, excessive tax assessment lawsuit. Second. Signed by Jay, to finance proof? Finance approved, yes. Right. Chad, are you taking this one? I can cover it. Misty, you can fill in anything I miss. But the uh, Artisan Village has... Uh, filed a suit against the city for excessive tax assessment. We had hoped to resolve that through negotiation. And uh, unfortunately, at this point in time, we have been unable to uh, do so through that negotiation. So we need to uh, defend this in a different manner with legal counsel. And we're seeking authorization to uh, engage legal counsel on that. Valerie, I see you're also here. Is there anything else you want to add to that? No, I think you covered that very well. All right. Julia, question? So how much money uh, are the taxes that they had to pay? Because if we are going to invest $82,000 in, in legal fees. So I want to know what is the gap? Well, that's, you know, that's determined in, in the course of the litigation through appraisal reports and ultimately what the judge would determine. Uh, the thing to consider here, though, is that this isn't a one-time cost. So if we were to reduce assessments, um, it would, moving forward every year, reduce the um, 
assessment that the city would bring in. In addition, um, there's a uniformity clause that requires a city um, assessor to uh, assess all the properties within the taxing jurisdiction in a uniform manner, which is what our assessor has done. So, um, you know, we can consider additional information, which is what our assessor uh, just prior to leaving had done. Um, and, uh, you know, once that information is provided, but ultimately, at the end of the day, we really can't just settle a case because it's cheaper than uh, defending it in these kinds of cases. Yeah, every apartment complex will come in then and say, oh, we we challenge ours then and want it lower as well. So that'd be a, a problem for us. So. My question was how much taxes was the tax bill that they received that they are... Is it in the report? No. In the packet? I think uh, that uh, that complex is several million dollars okay. apart in terms of valuation. In terms of valuation, I'm not sure what that translates to as a tax bill. Um, but again, that's an, an ongoing every year assessment. Dave? Are, are we using the same firm that um, did the high V litigation? Okay. Looks like yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Anything else? I can find that. All right. See nothing else. All in favor, say aye. 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 And opposed, nay. All right. That is approved. Next one, Randy. Do you want to do the motion? Yes. Motion to approve resolution R-228-22 to approve a contract with Dane County to accept 2023 neighborhood navigator funding. Second. Say by Jade. Finance approved. Finance approved. Yes. Right. Jed, you doing this one too? Yeah, I can cover this one. So as, as you know, that uh, we receive uh, grant funding from Dane County in order to hire our two neighborhood navigator positions. And this uh, grant has been uh, extended by Dane County for 2023. And this obviously action in front of the council is to approve the contract uh, to accept that grant funding. All right, any questions? Seeing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 And opposed, nay? All right, that's approved. Next one, Randy. Uh, motion to approve resolution. Might as well. Pardon? Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Okay, motion to approve resolution R-230-22, allowing members of the Common Council and other bodies to appear telephonical telephonically or via the Internet until April 30th, 2023. Second. Senator by Jay. And so this is kind of a temporary thing, but like I talked about in the last meeting, in January, maybe February, I'll bring forward an actual ordinance to permanently uh -huh. do this. So this is it, it, the one that we approved ends at the end of December. And so we didn't have time to get an ordinance done in time. So this is just temporarily extending it one last time as we finalize the ordinance. So the ordinance will come in in a month or so, a month or two, and then we can not talk about that. Well, not so we'll never talk about it again, but we don't have to renew it anymore every three months or six months. So this is just kind of continuing as the status quo for now. Any questions? No. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 And opposed, nay. That's approved. Next one, Randy. Uh, motion to approve resolution R-235-22, approving a contract for an organizational review and staffing study for the city of Fitchburg. Second. Second. Senator by Gabriella, the finance proof? Finance approved. The personnel proof. I, I can cover that. Yeah. Go ahead, Chad. So uh, City Council, uh, you, you guys have seen this proposal as part of the ARPA-TID conversation earlier this year and uh, approved us to move forward with the staffing and organizational study. Human Resources was able to put out a request for proposal uh, during the month of November. Uh, we received one uh, proposal back, uh, which met all of the components. Well, I'll back up to clarify. We received a total of one proposal back. That proposal did meet all of the requirements uh, that we had requested in the RFP. Uh, due to the timing of uh, city council meetings and the personnel committee meeting, uh, specifically uh, the council meets again January 10th, personnel meets again January 11th, and then council would meet again January 24th uh, in talking this uh, timing over with staff and then also with Gabriella as chair of the personnel committee. Uh, we ultimately requested uh, permission from the mayor to do a direct referral on this in order to allow uh, Baker Tilly an additional six to seven weeks to uh, begin their work on this particular project. We have a uh, report back date of July 1st 
And if we were to follow the traditional uh, referral, uh, we would be looking at uh, action by the council on January 24th uh, after the personnel committee meeting. Uh, Gabriella was comfortable with that approach. Uh, Aaron was also obviously comfortable with the direct referral. So this is before council at this point in time to uh, authorize staff to sign that contract and uh, begin the project with Baker Tilly and, and obviously capture that additional time that uh, this direct referral will afford us. Uh, we do have it added to the agenda for personnel committee in uh, January from a discussion standpoint and then we'll look to uh, keep the personnel committee and others informed of the, the uh, ongoing status of that project as it uh, goes through the first half of the year. Questions? Questions on? Julia? For Misty, um, because Baker Tiller is our uh, audit firm, is there is any conflict of interest that, that they are doing this study for us? So ultimately, Baker Tilly has to comply with the independence issues. Okay. So when they submitted the proposal, oh, oh we, we lost you. <laughs> I assume they looked at that and are comfortable that it does not offer an independence issue. Okay. Right. Anything else? Seeing nothing else, all in favor say aye. 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 And opposed nay. That's approved. Next one, Randy. Uh, motion to approve resolution R-236-22, approving the holiday premium MOU for police and fire. Second. Seconded by Jay to finance proof. Finance approved, yes. All right, Chad, what's this? So this uh, MOU is in front of council and again with a direct referral uh, largely because the holiday season is upon us and we we're hoping to, to uh, conclude this um, in advance of that. But we recently learned of, uh, of inconsistencies in ways in which the city was applying its holiday premium between the police and the fire unions and this uh, MOU uh, seeks to clarify that process and also uh, make it consistent between both of our police and fire unions and how holiday premium is applied. Uh, the goal being obviously is to recognize the uh, commitment uh, that our public safety professionals provide on holidays and then to obviously um, uh, provide that holiday premium as a, as a recognition for that holiday work that's put in. Uh, do, when do those uh, when do those two contracts expire? They don't expire until the end of twenty twenty four. So, uh, um, both of them expire the same year. Yeah. Oh, that's good timing. Yep. Um, so I suppose that at that time, this language is going to be incorporated into the contracts. More than likely, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Any other questions? Seeing none, we can go ahead and vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nay. That is approved. Next one. Next one. Motion to approve resolution R-241-22, purchase of traffic signal equipment for the Sinine Road reconstruction project. Second. Second. So by Jay, did uh, finance proof? Finance approved. All right, Jay. Sure. Uh, as you know, uh, Sign Road is currently under a reconstruction project. Uh, this uh, action item here authorizes the city to go ahead and purchase the traffic signal equipment that's needed for the two intersections at Sign and Lacey and Sign and East Sherrill. Uh, typically, the city of Madison would uh, make this purchase on our behalf, and then we would pay them back. But for whatever reason, they've uh, requested that we make the purchase uh, for this particular project, and then uh, they still will, will assist with the installation. Any questions at all? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And opposed nay? All right, that's approved. Next one. Motion to approve resolution R-242-22, approving Realty Income Corporation Settlement Agreement. Second. Senator by Jay. Did finance approve? Finance approved. All right, and Chad, do you want to speak to this before we do close session? I'll let Valerie speak to this one. All right, Valerie, go ahead. Well, just, uh, I guess very briefly, I'll describe to you what's before you, and then uh, if this body wishes to, you can uh, exercise your uh, right to go into a closed session to deliberate about this matter and to receive advice from me. Um, th uh, this is a, a case that was filed against the city uh, that resulted from a taking, a condemnation taking of property uh, during the McKee Road reconstruction a couple of years ago. And the state statute has kind of a process laid out. So the municipality can take the property if there isn't an agreement as to the value uh, of that property, then 
uh, in order not to hold up cases, um, or I'm sorry, in, their, in order to not to hold up projects, the city can do the taking, issue an award of damages, and then the property owner can later go back and um, uh, sue in circuit court if, if they believe they're entitled to more money. So that's what happened in this case. The property owner filed a claim. That claim um, has been litigated to date. There has been a um, settlement negotiated. That settlement is here before you. Um, and I guess I would just leave it at that. And if you want to ask more specific questions, I, I guess I would suggest perhaps exercising that ability to go into a closed session. Yeah, I think we want to go to Jay. Well, one specific question that should be answered in open session is, can we, can we discuss specifically what this parcel is? What is piece it? of property was taken? Yeah, so this is uh, in front of AMC. Okay. Along the along the key road, it was the key road by AMC. Along, um, you know, along that parcel along um, Mickey Road. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Randy, I'm, I'm moved to go into closed session. Yeah, read the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, you're good. You're good to read. I can. I can do that. Uh, Very good. good. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I would move that we go into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin statute section 19.851G, conferring with legal counsel for the government body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or is likely to become involved, consideration of settlement agreement with Realty Income Corporation. Second. Second. Second by Randy. All in favor of moving into closed session, say aye. 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 And opposed, nay. All right, we're going into closed session. We'll just take a minute here. Does uh, Randy or someone want to do a motion to reconvene into open session? I'll so move. Second. Moved by Jay, seconded by Gabriella. All in favor of reconvening into open session, say aye. 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 And opposed, nay. All right, we are back into open session. Any further questions or comments on the uh, um, motion at hand. No. <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor of approving, say aye. 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 And opposed, say nay. All right, that is approved. Going to mayor and all the reports. Uh, for myself, I think the big thing is don't forget that our next meeting is canceled. Do not show up in two weeks or you will be very lonely. And otherwise, I'm just uh, excited to again see the Holly Light Tour. I know that Lisa especially has put a lot of work into that, but as well as other people. I know uh, Dakota, our GS person, and a number of other people, you know, Fact TV with the events throughout the day. So I'm very excited about those things. And I guess that's about all I have right now. So we can do all the reports. Let's see, it's a even month, first meeting. District 3 would go first. Jay. Uh, Sayin Road is open to traffic again, yay. Mostly. Uh, and that's about all there is. There, there were some complaints from Terra Vesa about snow removal on some of the side streets, and um, I guess Bill basically said we'll try to do better next time. Yeah, I think there's a couple of things with that. Actually, I can mention that. Is, first of all, it's the first snow of the year. We've got a lot of new roads this year, including Southdale and Fish Ashery Road. And we've got some new staff as well. So it, it, we don't want to do that. We don't try to do that. But we will be better for sure. Um, we're just trying to get some kinks out. I know the time was actually a little bit rough as well, having it be during the day instead of at night when no one's on the road. So there might have been a mailbox or two that got uh, touched by a plow as well. So And the wet, heavy snow also takes yeah. more time to remove also. And... Uh, as uh, the mayor mentioned, you know, a lot of times our highway crew is out and on the roads by three in the morning removing snow. And by the time most of us are getting up and moving on our day, they've already had three or four hours worth of snow removal in. And this one, you know, basically started arriving about seven o'clock. So a lot of factors came into play here and uh, our team does a great job. And I know they are also looking at what could have been potentially done a bit better with this most recent one. So yeah. Shannon. No report. And Jim? No report. Randy? No report. And Dave? Um, I just want to add, with the snow, what complicated it, too, was garbage day. And people had their, and you saw a lot of places where the plows had to go out. That's all the 
go around it, so they've complicated it. Um, put a plug, we're having a, a toy drive in our neighborhood. Luna is hosting a toy drive. Uh, toys are accepted until the 23rd, and uh, they'll be distributed on, on Christmas Eve. They're looking for infant to teens, you know, both, uh, uh, both male and female, and their books, toys, whatever you would like to provide, please consider. Uh, we have plenty of needs. Um, some of you like you to keep in your prayers, Leo and Wendy Van Asten, uh, a family uh, over on Crescent Road that they're uh, trying to adopt two young teen orphans from Ukraine. And uh, uh, the city helped, helped uh, get a letter. Um, there is an expedited process. Uh, they were ready to adopt these, these, this uh, boy and girl when uh, Vladimir Putin declared war on Ukraine. And so um, they, they, the Ukrainian government has introduced an expedited um, method. And so keep them in your prayers that uh, those, those two children will come into their, their family. And just a, a sad note, I think many of you, if you watch TV or watch the weather, um, someone we know, Gary Canalti, his wife died suddenly Sunday night at, at sitting on the couch. Uh, I, I've known her for a long time. Probably someone you've watched on TV. So please keep him and their son, uh, Chuck, in your prayers. Thank you, Joe. Um, so there will be a um, public hearing um, on the city of Fishburg. It's a uh, Crescent Road stormwater study. It's going to be tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. Um, the meeting will be held at City Hall. There will also be a virtual option to be able to attend. Um, also, um, Dave, just let me know about this, but uh, Santa Claus is going to be at uh, Hugo Park um, this Saturday uh, at 10 o'clock, correct? Yep. yep, from 10 to 10.50. So uh, bring your kids if they're not scared of Santa. <laughs> <laughs> or if they are, that's our great photos. <laughs> uh, Julia, please cumpleaños. It was a good day today. Argentina won, and we are in the final. So, <laughs> so, so, um, so what I want to say is that um, also Santa is going to come to the Nine Spring Golf Course on Saturday at 2 o'clock. So there are going to be uh, activities in the park. Um, it's in District 2. And then um, I want to say uh, we also have received a lot of complaint, and I will ask Chad if you can send someone to check the high line. Uh, there's a lot of complaint about a lot of things, so if you can send someone there to check. Uh, I can forward all the emails that I, we got, okay? Thank you. And then um, I want to say, um, since this, this is the last meeting of the year, I want to thank all the staff at the city because of the incredible job that you have done this year, helping us, the elder, to do our job. Um, and it was a great 2022 uh, for the city, and I think 2023 we have a lot of great projects coming in the pipeline. So I want to say thank you. Uh, enjoy your holiday. Happy holidays. And I also want to say the same to my fellow elders. Uh, enjoy your, um, your holiday, enjoy your family and friends because, you know, at the end, this is the thing that matters. So, uh, Feliz Navidad and Año uh, Prospero Año Nuevo to all of my Latino community here in Fitchwell. Gabriel. Uh, I wanted to ask, Chad, I forgot to say this, is it possible that we could get um, a news flash maybe in January about the Christmas tree pickup? Uh, it's kind of hard to find on the website, to be honest, so just to make it a little easier to find. And then um, one note, since it started to snow, a reminder to adopt your local fire hydrant, dig it out um, three feet all around it to make sure easy for firefighters to get to it. It's really important that they can get to that fire hydrant immediately if there's a fire. And there was a fire last year, I think, in Fitchburg where a house might have been saved had the uh, fire hydrant not been completely covered in snow. So uh, adopt your local fire hydrant, keep it clear of snow all season, and it's a fun little uh, thing to do. Uh, if you put some pictures on social media, tag City Fitchburg, maybe, they, maybe they'll, you know, maybe they'll repost it, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Happy New Year, thanks. Hey, right. Can I just, I forgot to bring something up. Um, I noticed today we came and the municipality was here. Sometimes these get mailed to us. 
which means a city staff member has to put it in an envelope, put a label on it, yeah, pay postage. Can we stop doing that? There is nothing in here that is so pressing that it can't wait till our next council meeting. So I don't know, I don't know the mechanism that makes it happen, but um, if we can stop doing that, that would be great. Yeah, I didn't realize that. No problem. Yeah. All right. Yes. Next council meeting is January 10th. Next to me the whole is January 25th. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Moved by Jay, seconded by Randy. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 And opposed nay? All right, we are adjourned.